Welcome to Christ Way Church. Here's Pastor Anu with today's message. Today I want to talk to you about the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy of the Lord is joy that God himself has. That's the joy we have to have for the strength of our life. What is the difference between happiness and joy? Happiness depends upon what happens. Therefore, it called it as happiness. But if you put your trust in happiness, then you are going to be a victim of circumstances because circumstances will change. Happiness comes from how you feel, but joy comes from what you know. Joy is a deep-seated quality in the heart. Joy is a state of gladness that remains whether the conditions around are pleasant or not. In fact, a person can be disturbed about something but still can have joy in his heart. Proverbs 17.22 says, A merry heart goes good like medicine. Joy has healing properties like medicine. And joy will heal us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. This also teaches us that the perpetual worry and sadness are opposite of the medicine that heals us. And actually, that is harmful and a broken spirit destroys all life and vigor. Joy or grief of the mind have a very great influence upon even our body. Cheerfulness of our spirit, that is subconscious mind, has a great influence upon our body, Ecclesiastic 9.7. But chronic worry and emotional stress can trigger a host of health problems as they release stress hormones such as cortisol. When we are mentally tired, burnout or frustrated, we all lose energy, enthusiasm, zeal in our life. At all such time, where do we draw strength to carry on life, we have noticed? We often lose our strength, mental energy. For most people, they like to get the strength from in a form of recreation or from their habits, drinking or anything else, such habits or from relationship and many such things. Often we are tempted to find strength in our own strength. If we feel weak, we try harder. But the strength that we gather from any source is small compared to the strength that God can give. Nehemiah 8.10 tells us, Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Because of the Israelites' sin, they had lost their land and so when Ezra, the priest and the scribe, begins to read God's law, they were convicted in their hearts of their sins. They mourned over their sins. Then Nehemiah told them, Don't be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We find ourselves in the same situations as Israelites went through to rebuild the wall of their city. We too feel defenseless, dangerous and helpless in our lives. As a result, we will be without peace for a long time. We can see that there is no joy and there is no peace for a long time. At all such time, children of God should understand that's the time to go back to God, sit with God, repent. Something is wrong in your heart. Repent. And then we have to depend on God for the joy that comes from God, which will give us strength to cope with the stress of the life and happiness like Cosmetics meet surface needs and happiness many times evaporates and disappears in times of suffering. But joy frequently intensifies in times of our problems and sufferings and give us strength. You should understand the difference between happiness and joy. Joy is the character of the heart we don't have that we have to develop in Christ. So this joy frequently intensify in times of our problems and sufferings and give us strength. 
because joy is like character meets our deepest needs we are not burned with our problems we need this joy and we all know that we are not born with uh, this joy and it has to be developed and it won't automatically develop through some human techniques because it is a character i am stressing on this point joy is a character that has to be formed in us when it comes to experiencing joy in our lives for most of us will think that joy and sorrow are mutually exclusive you think joy is only when you are happy not when you are traveling through sadness pain problems in your life it's a pretty common understanding of joy that's reasonable but if there is a joy that we can experience when we are under threat sorrow and problems just as we can when all other things are going well that's what we are going to study from this topic the joy of the lord is our strength i say a 53 three says of jesus christ he is despised it is talking about jesus christ jesus christ is despised rejected of men a man of sorrow jesus came here for the good purpose but people misunderstood people treated him wrongly badly isn't it so he was a man of sorrow though the bible spoke of the sorrow of jesus christ or bible is explaining us jesus was the man of sorrow the the same bible spoke of the joy of the lord so what is this joy how do we get it in our christian work though we have heard many sermons about joy peace rejoice but we can find in ourselves there is no rejoicing in us isn't it how many sermons you might have heard but do you really have the joy of the lord inside of you there are times when we are down we think that something is really wrong with us isn't it many times we feel like that and what is the reason and what does this happen or why does this happen because there is a constant battle that is going on in the spiritual world and we have to fight for joy if you don't fight for joy we cannot get it like the world say joy is your choice if you just choose to be joyful you cannot be joyful isn't it as and when your heart is going down and sorrowful you should understand and you have to fight for it we have many fake temptations of joy in this world we should recognize and forsake them many find joy in tv shows acquiring more money education property position then they think they can be happy but there is a secret you need the joy of the lord to enjoy all that you acquire am i right yes without the joy of the lord whatever you earn from this world you cannot enjoy if you have the joy of lord even if you have nothing in this world you can enjoy the life this is the difference hallelujah jeremiah spoke of this in jeremiah 2:13 it says for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me of the fountain of the living waters and hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water even today many people are committing two evils not more than two evils just because of two evils you don't have happiness joy in your life you may be finding happiness but no joy in your life that is the first thing they have forsaken god as the fountain of living water which is the righteous life from god thereby an eternal life and the second evil they have dug their own well which god says as a broken well which is your own well that you are drawing water and drinking your own understanding of life though god says something you don't believe though god says something you cannot follow you will follow in your own understanding so you are digging the 
water from your own well and you live in your own way even the people of god certain things from the bible they will believe but not everything hallelujah there are many believers who have left their faith for money power having love of the pleasure of the sinful world you may be such a person you may be physically seated here in the church but you don't have faith in god do you have because you ran after or you are running after money position and the pleasures of this world which you cannot live such people will never have faith please understand my friends but these people are tricked in their thoughts that something they can have better than god now let's understand why we are not always rejoicing in the lord psalms 51 12 says after david had committed adultery basically murder he came to god for repentance but his joy in the salvation of god was gone and that is what sin does david committed sin sin weighs deep down in our subconscious mind robs of joy some of you are really wishing and praying oh let me have this joy why i can't be joyful why i am always sad the reason is there are certain habitual sins in you there are certain sins you are not at dealt with hallelujah so you should find is there any habitual sin in your life that is you know the sins of your heart but yet not making any effort and trying hard to deal with them to overcome and get out of you as a result you keep doing them and harboring sin in your heart that will steal your joy joy is a costly thing you cannot buy with your money hallelujah if this is your case as david did you have to pray ask god for restoration sin may feel good for a moment my friends understand when you are down immediately you want to go for something yes immediately you can rejoice immediately you get some relief but that is short lived and that will have consequences be careful and also other sins such as the sins of the heart like pride ego jealousy anger unforgiveness etc and etc will steal our joy another reason why you don't rejoice and find joy because you are walking in the flesh or living with the sense of worldliness as a believer if i am living according to my human nature and understanding behaving in the way my nature tells me to do i am not going to enjoy the things of god isn't it for this joy we have to enjoy the things of god see we get joy when we enjoy or when we do the things what we want this is joy of the lord that is your joy you do all what you want what pleases you so you get joy that is fake joy temporary joy for lord's joy we have to get we have to be taking pleasure in what he rejoices hallelujah as flesh does in enjoy the things of the spirit and if you are not enjoying to do what god says to spend time with the word of god and with god's people and if you are bored to attend church meetings fellowship evangelism you cannot receive the joy of god the most miserable man on earth is not an unsaved person you may think an unsaved person is a miserable person you may be praying for an unsaved person but the most miserable person is a saved man out of fellowship with god and his people who is living for himself and for his family if our reaction to troubles and trouble making people are bad that will take our joy friends there is only one thing that can stop to get the joy of lord in our heart is sin 
sin sin sin sin sin sin sin of our heart sin is the way we choose to go against god god says something we don't want to do because we don't find joy in what god says when we don't find joy in what god says we don't get joy hallelujah jesus said that in this life you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer because i have overcome the world john 16 33 now let's understand what the joy of the lord this joy is divine the constant joy we have to get not just something happens always this joy should be there that is the joy we have to get the author of the book of hebrews explains it to us as he writes in hebrews 12:2 let's fix on our eyes on jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he is seated at the right hand of god right hand of the throne of god jesus christ went through so much of sufferings isn't it so much he came for the good things but people misunderstood him people mistreated him people crucified him the joy of the lord jesus christ was the joy that jesus christ knew that was coming that is his glory in christ that sustained him through the indescribable experience of being nailed on the cross did you get me even jesus used to go and cry he couldn't go to the cross he fell flat on the floor father if it is possible take this cup away this is too painful for me but still if it is your will let that be done that should be our prayers many things for the sake of righteousness we have to go through pain sufferings but that is god's will you should only pray this prayer that jesus christ just prayed god if it is your will that will be done how did he get strength he got strength because he was willing to do what god said isn't it and he got strength through prayers hallelujah so even our joy for what we are going through should be the same jesus was not a lunatic was he no he was not a mad man he experienced real thing it is not that he experienced something so that he can console the people but what jesus is telling see what i am experiencing you too should experience you can experience when you go through the same situations like how i went through that's why jesus christ told in john 16:33 in this world you have tribulation be of good cheer i have won the victory in the same way you can win the victory that's the meaning so jesus knew here there was a great joy that comes after the crucifixion so that's what caused him to or that's what helped him to do what he did and for you and me the joy of the lord is what my friends to suffer and to die in the flesh for our failures and sin for our own prosperity for our own prosperous and peaceful and healthy life in this world as well as for our eternal life we should only think that tomorrow what will happen yes i am going through the suffering i will change i am going through what god is telling me to go through yes it is suffering but i will reach heaven think of tomorrow today you are working you are earning money thinking of tomorrow isn't it you need some money you need to earn some money for future not just for today who is just earning for today everyone is earning thinking that tomorrow they need isn't it many people forget today for our eternal life we should understand we will reach heaven one day we will die 
heaven and earth will pass away jesus said but his words will never pass away hallelujah so that joy has a powerful role and power in our pain and suffering we should tell yes this suffering i have to go through then only i will reach heaven then only i will be clean then only i will be glorious my mortal body should change hallelujah romans 8:17 and 18 say if we are god's children we have to suffer with him in order to be glorified with him and the present sufferings are not worth comparing with our future glory this is what you should write in your calendar this suffering is our suffering in our flesh to do righteousness not the suffering that you are going through because you have financial trouble or you are going through because of your sickness no and failures the suffering that bible mentions is the suffering that you have to go through because you are doing what god says there is a suffering that is the cross jesus asks us to carry and follow him that joy make us strong to endure all our sufferings and persecutions because joy is the antidote to the venomous sadness suffering pain even our unwillingness to obey many of you are not willing to obey when this joy comes in your heart this is the joy of salvation you should get the joy of salvation then you are all unwillingness will melt away hallelujah it has to come from within from a willing heart nobody can inject into you it should come from within listen to how apostle paul puts in second corinthians 4:8 he is telling we are pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not despaired persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed it is the joy of the lord the joy of salvation caused to paul to go through those sufferings so to have the joy of lord as a character we should know what makes god joyful you should ask god every day what do i do my god let me not do what i want which displeases you can you pray that prayers this is difficult for you isn't it this prayer is little difficult you can pray god give me that give me that give me that oh with butti is kept and prayer started prayer is started with a big butti kodi devare haki devare id haki ad haki id haki eshtu problems ideve haki devare idu 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 open the eyes and see another idea yenu illa that is the reason after prayer you are sad after prayer you should be rejoicing many of you are sad even after prayers you should come from the presence of god rejoicing when if you are praying for the things of god you should ask god god please let me not do what are displeasing to you please help me god please direct my ways so oh lord it's a difficult prayer isn't it it's a difficult prayer this is called prayer please guide me god and many things i may not understand what i should do please help me i will do god is expecting from us each day certain things never miss it unless you ask you will not get it hallelujah so to have the joy of lord as a character we should know what makes god joyful that may not make us joyful because we don't want to do that we want to have our set of ways to go that will disturb us hallelujah hebrews 1:9 says about jesus christ you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore god has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows this anointing you should get as god's joy is in the fruit of righteousness he hates wickedness we should also hate wickedness in us and in others and love righteousness in others as well in our own family members if unrighteousness is there we should hate we should pray for them hallelujah john 15:10 
Christ's joy was to obey God's commandments and to abide in His love. As Jesus obeyed Father and obeyed His commandment, He was abiding in His love. That is how we should wish for. Lord, let me obey your commandment and abide in your love. Don't you want God's love? By prayer you don't get God's love. God's love is like a father's love for a child. Father's love for an innocent child. Get it my friends? Why you are losing it? He is ready to give but it is costly. Hallelujah. Jesus obeyed father's commandments. And he was abiding in his love. That is how our heart should be. And Luke 15, 10 and 3 John 1, 4 God's joy for the sinners and of the world is what my friends? To repent and walk in the way of truth. Not just repent and take baptism also. No use. Many people will repent and take baptism and go to church but they will never change. That is not the joy of God. God wants them to change. That should be your joy. Hallelujah. When your own family people, when the church people are not changing, you should cry for them. Can you? That's what God is expecting from you and me. Hallelujah. So to have the joy of Lord in us, we should desire our family members and relatives and the whole world should repent, realizing their sins. And they should walk in God's ways. We should pray for them. This joy prompts you to do evangelism. Then you will never be bored of evangelism. You will love to do evangelism. Hallelujah. And James 1, 2 to 4 explain. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let the steadfastness have its full effect and you may be perfect, complete and lacking nothing. These verses teach us that our faith Life is forced into open and shows its true colors during our hard time. Who we are, we will come to know when pressure comes. When pressure comes, your heart speaks. Then you will know your plastic smile, your plastic look of gentleman will be open to the public. What we behave and who we are are obvious to everyone when bad time comes. You do what you want in your heart. What is there in your heart only you can do. Still don't justify. I never wanted to do. But just a thought. That thought is coming from your heart. You should understand. James 1 says, Consider it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds. To pass any test from God, my friends, the first thing what we need is the joy of God and thankful heart. But our first reaction is usually anger, despair, revenge, bitterness, not joy and thankfulness, isn't it? We should understand God will allow His people to go through trials to strengthen their faith, to form His character. Romans 5, 3 to 5. To make them complete. Then only we can reach heaven. Heaven is a higher place. Heaven is a costly place. One day you and me have to die. Our money, position. Nothing will take us to heaven. At the same time don't think that you don't go. Anywhere, nowhere. You will go to hell. For eternal death. Eternal suffering. You have to save yourself. Hallelujah. So this truth when we understand and accept it will change our perspective on our attitude in trials and difficulties. Remember, if we have the joy of the Lord in us only, that is, we ourselves have to hate our own sins. You have to reach to that level. You should understand your own unrighteousness unless you hate my friends what you hate you don't touch whomever you hate you don't talk am i right yes you mingle with the people 
of your kind. Whomever you hate, you don't even visit them because you hate them. In the same way, unless you hate your character, you cannot stop it. You are loving them. You want to continue. That's the reason I don't allow or I don't receive any excuse what you people say. You will say your own excuse to continue in your unrighteousness. But if you hate your unrighteousness, you have to hate my friends. Hallelujah. So we can patiently bear with God to accomplish what God wants through every trial that is to form His character, taking responsibility to change ourselves in humility, meekness, against our pride and our first natural reaction of anger, bitterness, grumbling, taking revenge. Think, the revengeful character is new, isn't it? The end of the message, you will understand how that is damaging your brain. I brought such a message. It's not a joke. You are playing with your brain, with your own character. Hallelujah. We should patiently work through every problem that we face, working on our attitude, our relationship with God and with other people. But if we hate the process that makes us like Jesus Christ, because it involves pain, it involves cross, we hate the process that Jesus wants to make us like his people. We want everyday goody goody days. Happy, happy days. God, today nothing should happen. Everything should go well. You don't get my friends. Just because you have such positive thinking, that is foolish positive thinking. Don't think that too. I had a lot of positive thinking, but nothing worked. You don't know the meaning of what is positive thinking. So, if you don't, or if we hate, the process that makes us like Jesus Christ because it involves pain, sorrow, stress, upheaval. So we are upset, burned with sorrows, we grumble, murmur when our family members give us trouble or any people give us trouble. We are tired, we are exhausted physically, mentally. That is the reason we don't have the joy of the Lord in our heart because we don't choose to humble down to obey at any time. Hallelujah. Now, Proverb 3, 7 and 8 says, Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear God, and turn away from your evil. It will be healing for your flesh and refreshment to your bones. This is what I am going to explain. Bible is telling, Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear God and turn away from evil. It will be healing. What is healing for your flesh? What is healing for your mind? What is healing for your body? The obedience of the word of God. Hallelujah. And that is the refreshment to your bones. But Luke 10, 21, Jesus said, many people don't understand this. I will show you a scripture. Luke 10, 21, Jesus said, These things are hidden from wise and understanding. Wise and understanding means the people who have got only worldly knowledge, proud people, and revealed to them, to the little children. This great truth of God is revealed only to humble. There are many people, after preaching so much also, they don't understand. Understand, my friend, if you are such a person, pride is so much inside of you. If you have got so much of pride inside of you, whatever I say, you will not understand. You will think, who can obey like this? Who wants to obey? Where is heaven? Where is hell? Who has seen? Who has seen Jesus Christ? Then why you are coming to church? Then you should not come to church, isn't it? You don't need a church. If you are such a person who is not understanding what I am preaching or the preaching like this, you should understand your own heart. Ego, pride, so much, Bible says. 
Jesus says in Luke 10, 21. Many people I have seen. Don't think that why this much I preached also why this person is not understanding. Don't be surprised. Pray for his pride. He's too much proud. Hallelujah. If we like faith in God and God's way in us, if we are not willing, that is, if you don't rejoice in God's ways, we are selfish. Oh, this is hard preaching, isn't it? I want to do what I want and I want God's joy. You will not get. When you do what God says, you will get joy. So if you are not choosing, we are selfish. Sin will increase in us. Sadness, worries will increase in us, isn't it? Worry, 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 anxiety will only increase in us. And self-focus, jealousy, envy, bitterness, unforgiveness, anxieties will increase in us. That will weaken our energy and they are destructive. Understand my friends, this kind of reaction that is our wrong emotions can lead to hurt ourselves and others, isn't it? Your wrong choice will hurt not only you, but to the whole family members and the church members. Take it from me. I have to tell you as a pastor, your wrong attitude, your wrong choice of walking in your own ways and don't want to walk in God's way, it is going to hurt you like anything. You may control, you may not show. Outside you are a happy person walking. Oh, I am happy. What's wrong with me? I am alright. The day will come. It will be revealed to the public how happy you are. Understand my friends. So your wrong choice, your wrong attitude will hurt you and hurt the whole family and hurt the whole church you should understand. Hurt the whole church of God. Hallelujah. With pain I have to remind you. So when we choose our own will to do, when we say it's difficult to humble down and obey God's commandments, listen to my friends. Listen to me, my dear friends. We are choosing negative, toxic thinking, monopolized by fear, anxiety, frustrations, anger, sadness, malice, violence, everything else. That is opposite to godly characters. Am I right? Many of you are not hearing my message once again. You will forget now itself. Go home and listen to the message. I am talking about your own heart. Please, I want to heal your heart. I want to save you. That's why God has appointed me on this pulpit. I cry and pray for all of you. Even if you hate me, even if you walk in your own ways, the more you walk in your own ways, you are letting me cry, having no joy. I will have Lord's joy. The suffering God has told me to take, I will take. Otherwise, I cannot stand here as a woman of God. Another truth you have to know. So, you will have what? Thinking, thinking. Thinking, your thinking will not change and your thinking will be toxic as your age grows up. Every year, one more year is going up. Huh? Every year, you are becoming one more year old. Nobody will become young and younger. You will become old. As you become old, your thinking will be stronger, stronger. So, this toxic thinking and behavior will affect your body, causing us to fall in sickness as those sinful thinking cause chemical changes to our brain. That is what is we have read in Proverbs 3, 7 and 8. Once again I will read, Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear God, and turn away from your evil. It will be healing for your flesh and refreshment for your bones. Hallelujah. Understand. Our brain will produce deformed proteins which cause chemical imbalances leading to degradation of the whole body. Brain damage. Brain cells damage. Brain is a puny place. It's very delicate place. An undisciplined mind which continues to think according to the 
all the worldly ways, human standards, and according to the fleshly things, when damage your nervous cells and can affect your brain function. Our undisciplined mind will increase the amount of stress hormones, cortisol, that is very dangerous, and other chemicals in the brain that can cause memory problems. Neuroscientists have discovered how chronic stress and cortisol can damage the brain. It is serious, my friends. Understand whom you are playing with. Tell me, I want to ask you, each one of you, after hearing each message, you will close your Bible. Sermon is over. Time is up. Go home Sunday. Make biryani and eat. Sunday is over. At the same time, as the Sunday, all the family members are there. Fight, 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 fight. This is your Christian life, isn't it? What you are giving to your brain cells, you don't know. You are feeding your family at the same time. You are spoiling the brain cells of your family. Did you get this point? Hallelujah. The good news is that we can modify our own damaging brain if we learn to think correctly against our natural human way of thinking. Bible advises us to renew our mind, isn't it? It is costly. It is essential to understand that man is created to communicate non-stop with creator. Through prayers, we should be connected to God, asking his advice and wisdom. Only then we can make good decisions and can think rightly. Turning our minds to heal our brain. Already it is damaged so much, my friends understand. Hmm? Bible advises us to pray without ceasing and pray at any time and also urges us to do something very important that is to live a lifestyle of joy. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord will heal our body. Hallelujah. And the joy and prayer are mutual friends. Understand, when you have joy, you will pray. Do you know? Why you are not praying? Somebody has to push you and pull you. Pray, 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 pray. Then on five minutes you will pray. Because you don't have the joy of the Lord. You have the joy of yourself inside of you, Lord. When you are rejoicing in you, you cannot pray. Write it, my friends. This is true. When you are rejoicing in you, in your ways, you cannot pray. You feel prayer is a boring affair. Understand? So a joyful person will pray always and the joy of the Lord will lead us to pray. <laughs> That's the another beauty. When we have the joy of the Lord, you will pray. You will pray for your enemies. You will pray for those who hurt you. Bible says, pray for those who hurt you. All these verses will be reminded. If you don't have the joy of the Lord, you will have revenge, bitterness towards that evil person. This is the difference. Hallelujah. We can find true joy always, especially in our troubles, if we pray. Let's understand the true joy alone is our strength. And the joy has healing properties. It's like a medicine. And joy is the theme that runs throughout the Bible. But you should understand, we don't store any good beneficial thoughts in our subconscious mind. Things that have hurt us scared or offended us and revengeful thoughts and those thoughts repeated by our mind got transferred to our subconscious mind during the night the brain process process is happening is when my friends when we sleep whatever you were thinking during the day without your knowledge process is happening my friend power station processing power station is working when you are sleeping without your knowledge without you command it happens hallelujah so that is the reason it's so important that what we see what we hear and what we talk about and what we behave and with whom we spend time this is the reason wrong people we should not spend time with because what they speak youngsters dirty jokes evil jokes Huh? 
your friends will enjoy they will pass you should not join with them it may give you entertainment but what you are losing you don't know you are destroying your own brain cells my friends understand hallelujah so you should be very careful whom you are mingling with nothing passes by without leaving a trace good or bad first corinthians 15:33 says do not be deceived bad company ruins good morals if you have wrong friends even if you have some good quality that you will lose my friends understand hallelujah i don't want to explain i feel like explaining but there is no time so it's our urgent need that we must consciously make daily choices of our mindset and behavior that will improve the structure of our damaged brain the transformation of the mind takes our desire and determination from a healthy and moral way of thinking it's a long term process and this will begin to restore the brain the nervous cells that were already damaged by the toxic thoughts what are your toxic thoughts i will explain jealousy revenge bitterness anger anxious and worried thoughts and many other things you want something bad to happen to that person because he might have done something wrong to you or he may be prospering toxic thoughts in all those places you have to have the right thoughts if you have the right thoughts that will begin to restore your brain you have to replace all these thoughts by healthy ones formed by the good thoughts by god like love joy peace patience godly characters and all our thoughts decisions and brain actions are forming in our mind hmm? what happens in our mind it goes to the brain science has proved that the mind can regenerate the damaged brain cells which are caused by our stress and toxic thinking but brain has only little capacity to regenerate be very careful already your brain cells are damaging if you are not changing you are still continuing to damage your brain cells my friends understand but the real restoration of our damaged and damaging cells is produced only by the holy spirit of god and without his strength and guidance we cannot think the right things and we need constant prayers because we are in a battle it keeps going back we have to keep praying so joy will heal us emotionally physically spiritually which joy you understand the costly joy the divine joy the joy of the lord even to regenerate our damaged and damaging brain cells let's close our eyes in prayers Thank you.